Most of us probably know how disc brakes function. After pressing the brake pedal, a master cylinder sends brake fluid down lines to the calipers, where one or more pistons will press one or two pads into a disc. The joys of friction then slow your car down, ensuring you don't end up smashing into the car in front or bouncing off into the undergrowth at the first corner you see. Simple and effective. But how about drum brakes? The operation of these humbler pieces of braking technology is arguably something less well known. Not helped by the fact that their use has declined over the years, relegated to being installed on cheaper cars with piddly engines. Let's take a deeper look. Unlike disc brakes, drum brakes use a rotating cylinder to slow a vehicle with brake shoes. When the drivers press the brake pedals, the brake fluid generates hydraulic pressure and presses the brake shoe against the rotating drum. The shoes are made of friction-causing materials, which ultimately slows down the vehicle. Over the past few decades, disc brakes have outpaced drum brakes as it is the stopping force of choice for most new automakers. It is still possible to buy a new car with drum brakes, but they are generally only used on the rear wheels with disc brakes on the front wheels. Forces of friction that come into action make the shoe fit around the drum. The latter action is prevented by pins and cams. Hence, the pin is called the anchorage pin. The magnitude of the friction forces multiplied by the radius of the drum gives the torque to stop the drum, that is, the braking torque. The entire mechanical linkage between the brake paddles and the shoes operates to transmit and multiply the pedal force to the brake shoes. The paddle force through the leverage produces an effective braking force against the drum. A retreating spring is placed between the braking shoes. The retracting springs pull the shoe away from the drum when the cam is turned and moved to the release position. The system in which shoes are placed to rub against the inner surface of the brake drum is called the internal extension brake. In this system, each part of the linkages must be free to move. The joints must be properly lubricated to reduce friction and wear. Otherwise, uncertain and uneven braking action may result. As the brake pedals are pressed, it compresses the fluid in the master cylinder and allows the piston of the wheel cylinder to extend outward. The external force of the piston of the wheel cylinder forces the brake shoe outward against the brake drum. As the brake shoe linings touch the inner surface of the drum, and due to friction generated between the brake shoe and the drum, the wheel speed decreases and the vehicle stops. As the forces are removed from the brake paddle, the retractor spring pulls the brake shoe inward, and contact between the friction lining and the drum is eliminated. Now preparations are made to apply the brakes again. Brake shoes fitted with brake lining, friction material, that press against the drum from the inside, drum and stop, are set inside the drum to produce braking force. With this system, friction is generated by pressing the brake lining against the surface inside the drum. This friction converts kinetic energy into thermal energy. Drum rotation helps to press the shoe and lining against the drum, offering better braking force than disc brakes. On the other hand, it is very important to design components so that heat is efficiently dissipated in the atmosphere by thermal energy. There are three types of drum brake. One, mechanical drum brakes. These are primarily used in two-wheelers. In mechanical brakes, when you press the brake pedal, the brake cam turns, pushing the brake shoe outwards and rubbing it against the drum. The friction between the brake linings and the drum slows down the rotation of the wheel, stopping the vehicle. When you release the brake pedal, the brake spring retracts, bringing the brake shoe back to its original position. Two, hydraulic drum brakes. These drum brakes operate through the hydraulic pressure in your brake system. When you press down on your vehicle's brake pedal, the fluid in the master cylinder increases the hydraulic force sent to the wheel cylinder. This forces the brake outwards. Then, the wheel cylinder piston, instead of a cam, pushes the brake shoes, and the friction generated by the brake shoe rubbing against the drum decelerates the wheel. The hydraulic disc brake relies on a similar principle, but the disc brake design is far superior to drum brakes. The disc brake system uses a slim rotor and caliper to stop your vehicle, instead of housing the key components within a metal drum. 3. Pneumatic Assisted Drum Brakes Pneumatic Assisted Drum Brakes, or air brake systems, are similar to hydraulic brakes but use air instead of fluid in the braking system. High-pressure compressed air articulates a pneumatic piston and turns the cam, slowing down your wheel. These brakes are mostly found in heavy commercial vehicles such as heavy-duty trucks, buses, railroad locomotives, etc. because of their stopping power. Now, if you are wondering which type of brake is better, whether disc or drum, let us explain. As with most things in life, the answer is rarely clear-cut. 
Drum brakes have some major design flaws. They overheat too quickly, take longer to dry off, and are typically heavier than disc brakes. At the same time, disc brakes cannot be used as a parking brake because they expand when hot and contract when cold. If you relied on them for a parking brake after using them, they would eventually cool off, shrink, and lose contact with the disc brake. Obviously, we'd have a problem here. The two brakes are just different. Disc brakes are the more effective and reliable choice, but they have their limitations. Drum brakes are not very practical, but they are crucial to parking a car. Unless, of course, you'd like to go back to wooden blocks on sticks. What brakes does your car have? Disc brakes or drum brakes? And what do you rather prefer? Tell us in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. See you in the next video.